Three Demons, Book 2, Chapter 43, Lion Boy Caius. After what was two back-to-back -back battles against both Malachi and Blank, Randy was left battered and bruised, his demeanor tainted with an unfamiliar edge. The Gabrielle Company ran over to Randy and Hades to check up on the former. Randy, is everything okay? Rhea asked with a slight hesitation in her voice, hoping Randy wasn't slipping back into that darkness she once saw before. Randy looks at her and nods. Yeah, I'm fine. Rhea looked over at her father and glared at him. She knew he had something to do with Randy's change in demeanor. Rhea's attention then turned away from her father as she felt a presence nearby in the woods. She gazed over to the thick brush rustling trees. Hades followed her gaze, his expression darkening into a glare. Then, with a soft chuckle, he called out to the figure, Come on out. You've been found out. Hades' voice carried a mix of amusement and anticipation. From the shadows emerged a young lion boy, his fur a chestnut brown as he wore a short-sleeved blue and red jacket with a white undershirt and dark blue jeans and cowboy boots to go with it. There was a smirk on his face as he addressed the company. Howdy! Sorry to spook y'all. I was just watching that guy fight. The lion boy explained as he pointed to Randy. Joseph's exasperated voice echoed in the depths of Randy's mind. Another fucking child! Hades, however, didn't waste any time. Boy, I really don't have the time to dilly-dally around all day. I can tell you carry quite immense power with you. Please, introduce yourself. Hades' eyes darkened once more as he glared down at the Lion Boy. Despite looking up at him, it felt as if he was looking down at the Lion Boy. With a hint of sweat dropping down his brow, the Lion Boy dropped down from the trees and introduced himself proudly. My name is Caius Lionheart. Kazato then sensed a familiar feeling about Caius. Excalibur, he said under his breath. Despite this, Caius was still able to hear him. Yep, that's right. Caius then pulls out a saw blade from his hip to show off to everyone. This is the Excalibur fragment known as Gelatine. One day it just appeared before me, and ever since then we've been inseparable. Caius then locked eyes with Randy. I saw how strong you are. I'd love to challenge you one day. Oh, I am absolutely game for that. Joseph screamed out in the subconscious. Weren't you just complaining that he was a child a second ago? Jake asked Joseph as he was dumbfounded. Caius then continued to introduce himself. I believe this is the part where I explain my past. Well, to start off, I'm a freelancer, taking odd jobs here and there to make ends meet. But the only reason I have to do this is, well, because a few years ago, my herd was attacked by someone. My two closest friends were killed in that incident. I don't remember much from it outside of seeing two giant black feathered wings, Caius revealed despite Rhea trying to stop him at the beginning of his story. However, once the black feathered wings were mentioned, this piqued the group's attention. They were immediately able to identify the being as a fallen angel, the same beings hunting the fragment wielders down. Rhea spoke somberly, Caius, that was a fallen angel, the same being still targeting you it seems. Instead of shock or sadness, a smirk appeared on Caius' face. It's ironic how life always seems to connect the dots for me. Suddenly, Gim bounded towards Caius, two young animal-human hybrids coming face to face. Joseph's annoyance came back in spades. Great, one was bad enough. Hades approached Caius with a sort of calculated aggression. Caius, I do, not, I do want to let you know that joining us isn't our quest. Unless you feel like dying soon by those same beings who are hunting you down. And trust me, they will find you eventually. Fear flickered in Caius's eyes as he reluctantly agreed to join their cause. As he agreed to join, a palpable tension hung in the air. The scent of determination yet uncertainty lingered. Hades' dark gaze lightened softly, a rare glimmer of approval flickering in his eyes as he welcomed the young lion boy into their ranks, even if it was only temporary. Since that's settled, Hades began, his voice carrying a weight of authority with it. We need to focus on our next move. His gaze swept over the group, everyone nodding and understanding. As they discussed their next moves, four feminine figures stand within the shadows, looking over at the events that had just transpired. I don't see why we just don't go over there and kill them already. They're sitting ducks. The figure wearing bright schoolgirl clothing with long, strained pink hair stated. Another figure snickered at her. You saw what that boy did. He killed Blank without much struggle. It would be suicide to go out there. The figure with short brown bowl cut hair and glasses responded condescendingly. Ew, gross, there's blood all over the place over there. Demons can be so messy. 
Another woman, chestnut brown skin, green eyes, and long black hair, wearing a maid esque dress, spoke out. Why are you, a fallen angel, even worried about blood? I swear you're such a baby. The pink haired figure spoke again. Kagere, you haven't said anything. It seems you've taken an interest in that boy. The figure with glasses revealed as Kagre, a woman with black hair, darkened eyes, wearing all black, as seen standing by Randy with an unknown intent. She finally speaks. No, he doesn't interest me. End of chapter 43.